Jesus. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. Good morning online. Thanks for joining us this morning. God, we're so thankful that you're here. Holy Spirit, we're so thankful that you've made your home in us, that there is no separation from you. Thank you, God. We love you. We love you. We love you. Our hands are open this morning. Our arms are wide open this morning to release everything that's not from you and in return to embrace you. We let go and we hold on at the same time. We let go of everything that hinders us from you, everything that would try to distract us and tear us away from you. We freely give it. We freely give it. We give you our affection. We give you our attention. We can do nothing apart from you, God. You wash us in the water of your word. You cleanse us. You make us new. We're renewed by the transforming of our mind. Our entire lives are renewed when we change our mind. God, thank you for your mind. I thank you that we have the mind of Christ right now. Help us to remember. God, won't you release the revelation that Mary had? That sitting at your feet is the best place. That all the frantic activity of the world and all the frantic activity of religion only serves to separate us from you. You've called us to your feet. She's desired the better part and it will not be taken from her. God, we desire the better part. God, we desire to sit at your feet. There's no better place. There's no safer place. We think we're getting things done when we're frantic. Putting activity to all of our plans. But there's no more fruitful place than sitting at your feet. There's no safer place than at your feet. The kingdom comes when we're at your feet. The enemy is crushed when we're at your feet, God. When we become aware and awaken to the fact that we're one with you and there's nothing that can separate us from you. God. So we desire that this morning. We're not going to pray from a place of lack or need. We're not going to pray from a place of despair or our situation, but we're going to look into your eyes and recognize it's finished. It's done. Everything we need is in you, and you've put yourself in us. We have everything we need. So we pray from a place of of expecting its manifestation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I want to invite everybody up close. I know there's not a lot of people here right now, but just get as close as you can. I want to, I just want to invite you to, 
not do something that you're not, it's not in your spirit to do, but I want you, to, I, I want to, like, y'all are free. We're free. So if God is moving on you to pray any prayer, to move in any way, to pray with your body, the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That is a multifaceted expression. That's everything that's in us. So I just want to love him this morning and honor him this morning. Give him everything that we are. Because here's the thing. Revival doesn't come to those who are awake. Revival comes to those who are still sleeping. And that's what it is. It's waking up. It's coming back to life. It's not the activity as much as it's a perspective and a perception of the reality of the kingdom that is now. It's right now. It is finished. The fullness of God dwells in bodily form. He's here. He's in us. He's now. So we exist in this place of revival. We exist in this place of being fully awake. To know and to be fully known. Holy Spirit, you are so sweet. You are so wonderful. We are so thankful. God, won't you come? For those who are still sleeping, an alarm bell will sound. It will come. But we acknowledge that we are not separate from you. We acknowledge our oneness and our unity with you right now. Thank you, God. Have your way today. We want to pray your prayers. We want to align with your heart and your mind. Thank you, Jesus.
gaze upon him. It's not just a look. You're spending time. You're gazing upon him. Join your life with his and joy will come. Your faces will glisten with glory. You'll never wear that shame face again. When I had nothing, I was desperate and defeated. I cried out to the Lord. And he heard me, bringing his miracle deliverance when I need it the most. The angel of the Lord, Yahweh, stooped down to listen as I prayed, encircling me, empowering me, showing me how to escape. He will do this for everyone who fears God. Drink deeply of the pleasures of this God. Experience for yourselves the joyous mercies he gives to all who turn to hide themselves in him. Worship in awe and wonder, all you who've been made holy, for all who fear him will feast with plenty. Even the strong and the wealthy grow weak and hungry, but those who passionately pursue the Lord will never lack any good thing. Come, children of God, listen to me. I'll share the lesson I've learned of fearing the Lord. Do you want to live a long and good life, enjoying the beauty that fills each day? 
Uh-uh. Then never speak a lie or allow wicked words to come to your mouth. Keep turning your back on every sin and make peace your life motto. Practice being at peace with everyone. The Lord sees all we do. He watches over his friends day and night. His godly ones receive the answers they seek whenever they cry out to him. Gaze, seek, pursue. God, that's in our hearts. We want to gaze upon you. We want to seek and pursue you. We want to run after you. And God, as we as we put in our hearts a, a passion to run after you, oh God, you encircle us. You empower us to seek you. And Father, this morning I, I saw the picture of people hiding in Song of Solomon, chapter 2. There's people hiding from his presence behind things things people have spoken over their lives, things that have been said, things that they have done. And they're hiding in this place of fear, of shame. And Jesus says, I'm going to leap over that wall. I'm going to leap over that wall of shame and separation that you've placed yourself in. You need to remember I paid for it all. It's all paid for. It's time to come out of hiding. Church of the living God, it's time to come out of hiding. It's time to come into an open place, a broad place, a place of gazing into the the face of Jesus. Jesus being with him. just pursuing him taking time to be still and just know know him really know him really know him pursue him with passion pursue him with passion
once darkness but now you are light in the Lord you were once darkness but now you are light in the Lord bride of Christ you once were darkness but now you are light in the Lord walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness righteousness and truth finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. God, we send out this cry right now. Awake. Awake, you who sleep. Awake, who, you who sleep. In this country, in this nation specifically, very specifically, I pray for the church in this nation for the body of Christ in this nation. And we send out a cry right now in the spirit that says, awake you who sleep. Awake you who sleep. The harvest is coming. There are those who don't know who they are, who are in the world, who've never heard the name Jesus, who've never heard the gospel, who don't know Lord, what you've done for us. There are those who need to know you. But what are they coming into? Awake you who sleep. Awake you who sleep. In Jesus' name right now. Church, awake you who sleep. God, we curse everything that causes division. We curse every divisive word, every divisive lie that would dismember your body and dismember your bride. In the name of Jesus. I felt the Lord say this to me yesterday and I want to share it. 
You know, the, the demonic, they fear Jesus. Hell fears Christ. But I believe there's a thing that hell fears even more than Christ alone. And that is the unification of the body and the marriage of Christ and his bride. That's the one thing hell wants to prevent. Because the God of peace shall soon crush the adversary and the accuser under our feet. It's that unification that destroys hell. It's the assembling of the body that destroys hell. It's time to repair the nets. God, I feel a battle cry against these things. God, I'm so thankful for this place. I'm so thankful for this house. I'm so thankful for, I feel like we're in the shadow of the Almighty in this place, that we abide under his wing, and there is a unity here, and there's just, this is such a special and sheltered place, and we are in your secret place. We are hidden in you in this place. And I'm so thankful for this time. I'm so thankful for this season of training and preparation that you've had us in. But it can't stay here. This is going to break out in this entire nation. I declare it right now in Jesus' name. That what we enjoy here will only increase and it will break out in this entire nation. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere, in every corner, in every city, in every place in this nation, there will be unification. There will be the body will know that she is one with Jesus. This is revival. That we no longer pray to a faraway God and make wishes. Ah, uh, we are no longer wishing. We are one with the creator of all things. And he's given us authority and dominion over everything he's created. Release it. Jesus, I pray, release it. Come on, guys. Let's lift our voice. I really feel this. If I'm wrong, then, then rebuke me. But, like, I just really feel like there's something that we need to just chop away at right now. Cry out for this because this is... This is his desire. This is the will of God. This is what Jesus prayed, that we would be one with him as he is one with the Father. And I live to fulfill his will. I die to fulfill his will. That he would be one with his bride. This is the will. This is his, this is his desire since the beginning of all creation that he would have a people created in his image and likeness to be one with. That we would rule and reign the entire cosmos with him, the, entire, the entirety of creation. This is our reality. This is what he's finished. This is what is done. It is reality now. We need to wake up to this reality and walk in it. Every situation is nothing. It's nothing. It's minuscule. There is nothing. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. There is nothing the enemy can do. All the things, all the groaning in the world, all the groaning and shaking in the world, is the, all, it's all creation waiting in eager expectation for the revealing of the sons of God. 
We are the sons and daughters of God. God, it's time for us to be revealed. It's time for your body to be revealed in the earth. Holy Spirit, won't you just water, let your water come, let your river come and wash away all resistance. Mighty river of God, I pray for your flood to come. Flood of God, come and wash away all resistance to the assembling of your body, to the unification of your bride and our unification with you. It's not two separate things. We can't join with each other unless we're joined with you. It says, he himself is our peace, making the two one. You are what makes everything one. You are our peace. You are our unification. This is your will, God, that we would walk fully aware, fully awake, that there's nothing that separates us from you. There's absolutely nothing that can come against our union with you. It's all in our minds. So we become transformed by the renewing of our mind. We renew our mind in this truth, in this revelation, that we are one with you. There's a groan. I just feel a groan. I just feel this thing. There's just this groan. There's this cry. God, make it manifest. Let it manifest. We want it to manifest. We want it to manifest in our lives. We want to manifest in our generation. God, that we would be the feet of your body. We would be... the body of Christ touching the earth, the kingdom of God being one with earth again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
motivated I will never be the same With just one look Everything changes I'm captivated I will never be the same I just want to read a few things from Hebrews. Um, so if you can just bear with me for a moment. And I just ask you to just take familiarity out of your mind as I read this. Now, even the first covenant had regulations for worship in an earthly place of holiness. For a tent was prepared, the first section in which were the lampstand and the table and the bread of his presence. It's called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a section called the most holy place, having the golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant covered on all sides with gold, in which was a golden urn holding the manna and Aaron's staff that budded in the tablets of the covenant. Above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat of these things we can now speak in detail. These preparations having thus been made, the priests go regularly into the first section performing their ritual duties, but into the second only the high priest goes, and he but once a year, not without taking blood, which he offers for himself and for the unintentional sins of the people. By this, the Holy Spirit indicates the way into the holy, holy places is not yet open as long as the first section is still standing. According to this arrangement, gifts and sacrifices are offered that cannot perfect the conscience of the worshiper, but deal only with food and drink and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until the time of reformation. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, he entered once for all into the holy places not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by the means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkled of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from the dead, works to serve the living God. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of the calves and the goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. 
Thus it was necessary for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, not to appear in the presence of God on our behalf, nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy place every year with blood not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once and after that judgment, So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which never take sin away. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and write them on their minds. I want you to just listen to this. I will remember their sins and lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Jesus, thank you. God, would you forgive us for familiarity with your blood and your sacrifice? Will we not only just take this one week to actually recognize how important that was Will we daily wash ourselves in your blood and your broken body? Jesus, you came to save us all. You paid the high price. You are the high priest. There's not a need for an animal sacrifice, any kind of offering that was required under the law because you fulfilled it. You fulfilled everything, God. So this groan that we have inside of us, would it come from a place of actually knowing the blood that washed us, the one who washed us, the one who cleansed us and made us whole, to tell us that we're righteous, that we don't have to remember our sins anymore either, that our transgressions are gone. Jesus, thank you for the the distance from the east to the west, that you don't you don't remember the in-between of our sins anymore. You don't remember it. God, thank you for that reality. Thank you for the reality that we've been cleansed, Jesus, by the washing of your blood, the fulfillment of covenant, a better covenant through our high priest, Jesus Christ, a better covenant through our high priest, Jesus. You are our high priest. Thank you for fulfilling it all. Thank you for putting it on your back and carrying it and nailing yourself to a tree to fulfill this so that we can have this life, not where we stand in the shadows and we hide, but we come boldly before you. We ask for our families, our nation, those beside us, God, that you would come with your fire, with your wind, Holy Spirit. Would you come again? Come again, God. Come again, God. Come again, God. We will not settle. We will not settle because you have finished it all, Jesus. You have finished it all. So we're not going to sit haphazardly and live this life while we watch the world fall apart because you finished the work. You finished the work and you put it inside of us and you called us co-heirs. So will we stand in that reality?
ready? Will we rise to the occasion? Will we not be silent anymore? Will we open our mouths when it's time to open our mouths? Will we consistently keep praise on our mouth? Will we continue to ask bold prayers? Will we ask bold things? Will we ask things that we're like, wow, this is crazy. There's no way this could happen, but it can happen through you, God. Everything is possible through you because you've fulfilled it all. You've done the work, Jesus. You've done it all. We don't have to labor anymore. We don't have to strive anymore because it's all been completed by your blood. It's all been completed by your blood. Jesus, wash familiarity out of us. Wash familiarity with you out of our body. Wash entitlement out of us. You love us so much. God, I ask that we, we wouldn't condemn ourselves anymore for what we're not doing. We're not living with the pressure and the weight of sin anymore. We put it off. You established your kingdom and you tore the veil and gave us dominion, God. So will we walk in it now? Would you break timidness off your body? You made a way. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. I ask you guys this morning to really just press in and put something on your mouth. Something happens when you consistently pray without ceasing. The Word says to pray without ceasing. So God, we're going to continue to contend for things to change for your glory to flood a nation, for your glory to flood a universe. You established your kingdom, it's time for it to reign here in earth. But it's dependent on your people recognizing who they are. So we will not stay silent anymore. We will not stay silent anymore. We will not let the rocks cry out in our place, God. Yes. We are breaking silence this morning, Jesus. We're pressing in. We're going to continue to just keep your name on our mouth. If the only thing we can say is the name of Jesus, it's enough. Your name is enough. Your name is above every principality, every ruler of this world. So we say, Jesus, Jesus, have the first place. Have the first place in everything, God. Would you take your rightful place in our hearts? Would you take your rightful place in America, God? We continue to say your name until... We see you take your place, God. You're seated on the throne, but it's time for you to sit on the throne here. It's time for us to get out of the way and allow you to sit on your throne here in earth. God, we will not stop until we see it. We will not stop until we see it. So would you change everything again, God? Change everything again. Thank you for breaking the bread of your body, spilling the wine of your blood. Oh, thank you, oh, my heart will see forever. Oh, thank you for breaking the bread of your body and spilling the wine of your blood. Oh, thank you, oh, my heart will see forever. 
thankfulness never leave our mouths. Let, let it never not be on our lips, not be on our hearts. God, we're so grateful for you. You are everything. You are all and in all. We belong to you, God. We belong to you, God. You call us beloved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, beloved, this particular moment is coming to an end, uh, but he's with us everywhere, all the time. That doesn't end, it doesn't change. So pray without ceasing, and this Friday is Good Friday. We're going to get together and celebrate. Have a great day. Be blessed. Bless the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.